election results, sustainable initiatives, and more on this The Exeter Biweekly Report. I'm Hillary Donnell from Exeter TV. Let's get started. Last week, voters gathered in the Talbot Gym to weigh in on the town budget and warrant articles, as well as elect local officials. 1,443 voters cast their ballots, representing a 10% voter turnout. All 19 articles on the ballot passed, including Article 4 regarding the construction of a solar array at the transfer station, which the Energy Committee backed and worked to explain to the public prior to the vote. Not only do we pass it, but we passed it with a big majority. 74% of you voted for it, and I thank you very much. There's a long process ahead before this thing actually gets up and running. So thank you for taking a look at it on the ballot. I know it looked like a lot of money up front, but it really isn't. There's no tax impact. It pays itself off starting on day one. It's cash flow positive, and it's only going to help the town step into a brighter future. So thank you. In the only contested race for trustees of the library, the three incumbents won back their seats. Molly Cowan was re-elected to her second term on the select board and had this to say. Thank you for re-electing me to serve as a select board member. It is my honor and privilege to serve you. We are going to be, in the next couple of months, really working with state and local and federal officials to secure funding that was just passed through Congress through the American Rescue Plan. Thanks in large part to our federal delegation. We can use that money for infrastructure projects right here in Exeter like the River Siphon Project. Please tune in to meetings. They're every other Monday. You can find them on Zoom. And thank you again for your support. A composting program was launched this Tuesday by the Department of Public Works at the transfer station. Here's more. Residents can bring their household kitchen waste to the transfer station during normal business hours and deposit the waste in special 64-gallon covered bins. Unlike backyard composting, With commercial compost, you can drop off meat and meat bones and other things that are not typically compostable in backyard compost. A list of compostable items is available on the town website. Mr. Fox Composting out of Elliott, Maine will haul the material to their facility for composting, diverting this material from landfills. Landfills um, will just trap all that organic waste and it won't biodegrade, it won't break down. Um, And the way that we are able to uh, compost the organic waste, um, it goes to our facility and we're able to actually have it all break down into soil, which then um, local farmers, landscapers, and um, households will actually buy back the the soil and put it into their gardens. Um, So it just creates a full full circle, um, which which is great. To drop off compost, all you have to do is dump your compost pail right into one of these containers, or you can dump one of the plastic bags in here. It's important to purchase compostable bags if you're going to dump the bag into the bin. You wanna make sure it says compostable, not biodegradable. Compostable bags are actually made up of starchy materials, just corn and potatoes. Biodegradable bags are okay for landfills as they break down in landfills. They're not compostable. Exeter residents do not need a transfer station sticker to use the compost bins. You only need to show proof of residency when checking in at the front gate. With the launch of this composting program, Exeter is joining other communities in being more sustainable. Composting is, I would say, definitely trending right now. Uh, I think one of the big reasons it's trending is because it's simple and it's inexpensive. So it's one of those ways that many people who want to give back to the planet, um, want to be more environmentally friendly, but maybe don't know how, like this is a very uh, simple and and easy way to do that. Um, And it also has an immediate impact. There are a lot of other great environmental things that people can do, such as like solar or wind, Um, in terms of energy and power, but those usually take a long time to get going or build. Um, We're composting, you know, you're, you're, everybody's creating some sort of organic waste and by just sorting it out, which is really simple. I mean, you do that with recycling and other things. um, It it has that immediate effect. It removes it from the landfill. It cuts down on, on the methane gases that, 
uh, landfills trapped. So it's just great. The local St. Vincent de Paul has been making strides to help out those in need during the pandemic. I spoke with Molly earlier this week, and here's what she had to say about a recently introduced program. My name is Molly Zarillo. I'm the executive director here at Society of St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry in the Clio Castingate Community Assistance Center. And we're located at 53 Lincoln Street here in town. Could you tell me a little bit about uh, operation and what people can do to access your services? So right now, um, we are open to distribute food for our food pantry. We're open on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We're also open on Monday evenings from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. They have to be a client, and in order to be a client, they need to be um, a resident of Exeter um, or one of the surrounding SAU 16 towns. Just give us a call, and if you're not currently a client, there's a really quick intake uh, to see if you qualify to become a client, and that it's really quick. And once they are established as a client, um, they come and they pull around front into our um, parking lot and give us a call when you arrive so we know um, that you're here and we run the food out to you. So as I mentioned earlier, we're closed to the public right now, but that's not preventing us from providing a number of foods um, to our community members that are in need. I'm actually curious about this because it was on you guys' Facebook page. Can you tell me a little bit about um, Take Out Hunger? So Take Out Hunger, it's a newer program um, that just started. It's this great, this great service that is purchasing meals through um, restaurants. And the intention is that the uh, food, the, the meals are being provided to um, food pantries to help people um, distribute through food pantries. So Green Bean here in town um, is the first to partner with Take Out Hunger. And it's been wonderful because a lot of our people are struggling financially. So sometimes eating in restaurants or getting takeout is out of their reach. So this is a wonderful way to provide some, you know, great food um, at a local level. Also great. Uh, where can people learn more about Vincent DePaul and uh, follow you guys online? No, oh, certainly. Yeah. Um, so our website provides a great deal of information. Um, so that's svdpexeter.com. Um, and we also are on Facebook as well. Um, and anybody, um, we also have a great newsletter that goes out to supporters on a monthly basis as well. Yeah, I, I can't even and, uh, say enough that this is really an incredible service. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. The local community is rallying around a young Brentwood boy. Find out how you can go to the Bash for Nash to support raising funds and awareness for a rare form of childhood cancer. The event will be held at the New England Dragway in Epping, New Hampshire. It will be free for visitors as well as those wishing to show off their cars and trucks. Live music and food trucks will be on hand as well as raffles and prizes. Social distancing and face coverings are required for those attending the event. Our son Nash, who's eight years old, um, was diagnosed with um, DIPG, and that stands for Diffuse Intrinsic Pontine Glioma, and that's a tumor in his, in his brain stem. Um, he was diagnosed uh, just before Christmas. Um, these tumors are considered terminal. There are no uh, known curative treatments for these um, and our big goal with this event is first off to give Nash a fun day. Um, he loves antique cars. Um, he gets that from his dad. Um, but our second main goal is to raise awareness about uh, DIPG and other um, childhood brain tumors. This event started was I went to visit the family. I'm, I'm friends with some of the family, and, um, but I hadn't met Nash yet. And so I went to the house uh, to meet him and to bring him some clothes that uh, that we had gathered up for the family. Um, and uh, Nash was sitting in his uh, in his sofa, and he's surrounded by all kinds of cars and trucks and and uh, construction vehicles. And so I said to the little guy, I said, Nash, I said, you you like cars and trucks, huh? And he looked at me and he said, Dude, I'm named after a car. I'm a car guy. So uh, it's just, it, we all broke down laughing. It was really funny and it struck me. And, and, and I knew that, uh, you know, I've got a lot of friends and, and, and um, you know, uh, contacts in the, in the car and truck industry and, 
And so I just knew that I had to do something. And, and we started this, uh, you know, this bash for Nash event from, uh, big tow trucks to, uh, old military vehicles, motorcycles, muscle cars, antique cars, uh, and trucks, uh, you name it, um, exotic cars. We've got quite a few exotic cars coming. Um, and, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a live band, um, Southern breeze. It's they're called, um, they're going to be playing. We've got a DJ, uh, lots of raffles and exciting prizes. For more information about the event, search Bash for Nash on Facebook. Up next, Blue Hawk Media with your SAU 16 update. And then want families to know that all of our students, including those that are on alternating cohorts, will return to school every day, five days a week on Monday, May 3rd. Uh, we have been working with uh, our teachers, uh, teachers groups. Uh, we've had uh, very positive conversations. Uh, this board will be working through final agreements uh, over the next couple of weeks. So attending today are town council, Walter Mitchell. Okay, that's a good looking young man right in front of me. And of course, most of you know Karen Clement. Now, Karen, Karen's here obviously because if the Slackmen don't know, you can bet that she does. At the end of the third quarter, Exeter Blue Hawks 45, Portland Clippers 45. The winner of today's contest will be facing the winner of the Bedford Concord contest. Well, that about wraps it up for us today. We'll see you for the next Exeter Bi-Weekly Report on April 2nd. Thank you for watching. I'm Hillary Donnell, and here's your four-day forecast. Friday will be partly cloudy, with a high of 39 degrees and a low of 20 degrees. Saturday will be sunny, with a high of 51 degrees and a low of 27 degrees. Sunday will be sunny, with a high of 55 degrees and a low of 29 degrees. Monday will be mostly sunny with a high of 52 degrees and a low of 34 degrees.